Hey everybody, what is going on? Welcome to the 18th Python with T. Kinter and building an actual fully fledged program tutorial video. Uh, in this video, we're going to be adding the last of the menu items to our menu. I'm sure some of you guys are tired of doing menu items. Um, hopefully I've spart you know, spiced it up a little bit with some functions that they're running. Uh, but the more ex true exciting stuff is, is coming after these uh, last menu items. So I'll be happy to be done with them anyways. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to come over to our uh, CFBTC app class, which is here. And we're going to make uh, the changes in the typical spot, which is between the last major uh, bit and tk.tk .tk config. So we'll come down here. And now we're going to add the following. We want to have a trading button. So this is going to be a button that the user can like go to trade and they can click buy or sell uh, or do manual trading. And my idea is that eventually we could allow them to set preset amounts. Um, so say they have one total Bitcoin. You can trade you know, 0 0.01 Bitcoin at a time if you want. So you can buy and sell 0 0.01 at a time. So maybe you want to set up preset offers and say, okay, when I hit buy, just automatically buy 0 0.01 Bitcoin for market, let's say. And then the user could literally just click one button and it executes that trade for them at market value. Okay. And the other thing too is we can bind them to key presses. So control B instantly buys and control S would typically be saved, but we could bind it to something else. But you get the idea. Um, you can allow for really quick buys and sells. And then also we can have a manual trading. And the manual trading is going to be uh, quite a bit different uh, than the other stuff that we're building and that's kind of an interesting part of this application because that's going to pull up a new window um, and that's also where we're going to incorporate uh, a module into our program so so far our program is like one really long script uh, and that's not really the most ideal uh, because it's a project that only I am working on it works because it's only me that's making it but in general you might have multiple people working on a project and generally like most large applications are going to have a lot of imported modules from other other places um, so people work on different parts so to speak anyway um, let's go ahead and get started so we're going to say trade button equals tk dot menu so it's a menu option menu bar as usual uh, comma tear off is going to equal one and then we're going to go ahead and have trade button dot add underscore command and the label to this command will be manual trading and then we're going to actually have the command itself uh, equal uh, lambda uh, and then we're going to do the uh, pop-up message and that will be just this is not live yet, something like that. Um, in the current version on GitHub, uh, this manual trading is not live. However, I do have a working version of that, so maybe very soon uh, that will be live, but we'll see about that. Um, so we've got that. Now we're gonna do, we've got basically manual trading. Then we wanna have automated trading, and that's going to allow the user to trade, say, uh, say they, you know, a lot of people trade on really, really simple rules, like when the simple moving average, uh, when the 10 simple moving average crosses over the 20, if that's up, you know, if it crosses over an upward motion, buy, and if it crosses over in a downward motion, sell. Um, so we can allow people to actually fill in parameters to, for their automated trading, uh, and the, the program will trade based on those. Um, so that's that's to come. Then uh, we're going to do uh, trade button dot add underscore separator. It's a hard word for me. <laughs> and then here, I'm just going to copy and paste these, these right here. Um, and instead of manual trading, this will be a uh, quick buy. And this is where the user can set up a quick buy amount and then a quick sell amount as well if they wanted to. Why might a user want to offer different amounts for buy and sell? Uh, there are fees taken out of every trade. So on BTCE, it's a 0 .02 or 0.2% uh, fee. So um, so in general, in general, you would want to buy a certain amount and sell um, a lesser amount because on top of that amount, you have a fee. So if you trade the exact same amounts every time, you're going to pay a fee. Um, 
And so you kind of need to incorporate that in. So, you know, people might have a different version of a buy and sell. Anyway, you get the point. Um, then we're going to add another separator and have another option here. So we'll do this, copy, paste. Um, so these here will just be the actual actions, right? They're going to quit. You know, you click quick buy and it just executes a buy. You click quick sell, executes a sell instantly for you at the values that you've preset. Now, how might you preset those values? Well, you're going to have to set up uh, your quick buy sell. Easy enough. And then um, that's basically all we need to add for that. So we're going to do menu bar dot add underscore cascade. Um, the label here will be uh, trading and then menu uh, that we're going to basically add to our menu bar is going to be trade button. So it'll be this little you know value up here that'll say trading. You'll click on that and you'll have options like manual trading, automated trading, quick buy, quick sell, and set up quick buy, quick sell. Easy enough. And then next we want, we have a, um, as we've seen, and maybe if you've toyed around with the application, whenever the application updates, first of all, it refreshes the graph. So if you have zoomed into the graph, uh, when it does its update, it's going to zoom you out of the graph, and that might be not ideal to you. Um, so you might want to actually pause the whole animation function. Same thing with the algorithmic trading. We're going to attempt to throw everything into the uh, animate function. So maybe we want that to stop animating <laughs> for some time. So we want to be able to have start and stop. So the next thing we're going to have is start stop, literally. And that's going to equal tk.menu, and then it's going to be to the menu uh, menu bar and tear off equals one. And then we're going to have start stop dot add underscore command. And the label for this command uh, is going to be resume. And if they do resume, the command will be equal to lambda a function that we don't have yet, but we're gonna call it load chart. And the parameter will be start to that. And then uh, we're just gonna copy this, what we just typed here, copy, paste. Um, and this one will be, uh, we'll go, we'll call this pause and load chart, we'll call stop. And that's that. Now we're gonna go ahead and add this. Um, we typoed this T. Uh, lowercase it hopefully you didn't copy me there but that uh, was a typo um, now we'll do menu bar dot add underscore cascade label equals uh, resume pause client and the menu that we're going or basically the menu that we're adding here is start stop start stop like that um, now finally um, most major programs have the following as their last uh, menu item, and that would be a help. So and this one has a help, and it's got about idle, and it's got uh, idle help and Python docs. Um, so we want to have a help help as well. So we're going to call help menu, easy enough, equals tk dot capital M menu. Where's it going? Menu bar. Uh, tear off is going to equal zero. I don't really see the point of tearing off help. Um, then we're going to do help menu dot add underscore command. The label to this one will be tutorial. So that's going to be an interesting one. Uh, so the idea of tutorial, uh, which will be probably we're going to cover the tutorial function in the next uh, video. But the idea of tutorial is going to be that we uh, can lead the user through an interactive tutorial on how the program actually works. Um, so that'll be kind of interesting to do. I've always liked really interactive tutorials. So I'd really like to add an interactive tutorial to the program. And doing so, um, I'll show you guys how we can have sequential windows. Uh, I was having kind of a hard time with that at first, but it's not too hard. So anyway, to command equals tutorial. And then we'll also have menu bar. Um, we'll just leave tutorial for there, and that'll be the only option. Menu bar dot add underscore cascade. Uh, label equals help and the menu will equal help menu. Um, we might also add like a help um, option or like a frequently asked questions or something like that or something that links to a Wikipedia page or a wiki about how this application works, something like that. For now we'll leave it this way. Um, 
And that's it. Okay, so we've got all of our options. Um, now what we want to do is, uh, real quickly, we're going to add this load chart function. It's a really short function, so I'll put that in this video. In the next video, we'll talk about the tutorial function, so that's a little bit longer. So let's scroll up all the way to the top. And now we're going to define a new function, and it's going to be load chart camel cased. And the parameter is run, basically start stop. And then we're going to go ahead and global a parameter called chart load, which does not exist yet. So let's go ahead and make it chart load. And we're going to call this um, uh, actually chart load, we'll say true. We'll define it as true naturally. So global chart load, and then we just basically ask two questions. If run equals start, uh, chart load equals true. So basically chart load is animation, pretty much animate. Um, so it's actually really not just chart load. Uh, as we move on, this will be what pertains to the algorithmic trading uh, section of the program, all that stuff. And really, pro actually, probably eventually we will separate the two because in general, if you're auto you know you're doing automated trading, you might not necessarily want to load the graph every time, something like that. But then again, the graph, if you're doing automated trading, generally you're going to need that data anyway. So I don't know. We'll 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 see what we decide to do about that. Um, but eventually we'll we'll create a headless version of this program so people because right now it's it's a GUI. So if you wanted to run this on your own, say on a, uh, a cloud server, say you want to host it on uh, linode.com or DigitalOcean, this won't run on there because it wants to run a GUI um, and it'll, the program will fail immediately. So we'll make a headless version as well um, that uh, people can run off of a Linux machine in the cloud and they can do automated trading pretty much indefinitely. But way down the road. So now if run equals start, uh, L if run equals uh, stop, we'll do chart load equals false. Okay, let's go ahead and save and run that really quick. And okay, we did get an error. Tutorial is not defined. Um, that's fine. Let's just define tutorial really quick. Uh, tutorial, empty parameters, pass. That's just a really quick way to, to make a function. Um, for it. Okay, so here is our application, file, exchange, data, trading. They could do all this stuff. We click on this, you get the window. It says it's not live yet. Okay, that's fine. Uh, resume, pause, resume. Mm, I kind of want to capitalize those. Uh, and then help and tutorial, which is not live. So we've got all that done. Uh, the only thing I really want to do, we need to capitalize resume and pause. That just is going to bother me. So <laughs> let's go uh, uh, do that really, really quick. Uh, where are you? Here we are. So capitalize and capitalize. Okay. Okay. So that's going to conclude uh, tutorial number 18 for our Tkinter video. In the next tutorial, what we're going to do is build this tutorial function. So the one that we just really wrote really quickly um, and just made it pass. <laughs> uh, we'll fill that in and actually kind of, we're not actually going to make the full tutorial. The the program is not done, so there's really no point to make a full tutorial. But the idea is to kind of make a, a simple skeleton for how we might do the tutorial. So that's what we're going to be doing in the next video. So uh, stay tuned for that. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support, the subscriptions, and until next time.